are you familiar with like you know, YouTube's going to love this one? We're going to get super weird with this one. Are you familiar with like the MK Ultra experiments and how they talk about a lot of that stuff? Where they they would have two rooms, yeah, and they would have one person in the other room where they'd be pretending to shock the other yeah, person, yeah, where I, nothing would actually be hopping to them, and then somebody's in the room next to it hearing all the screams and everything, and they get the person hearing it to do something because they think the other person's getting hurt and nothing's actually happening. It's wild what they can do to people. Yeah. That was like an authoritative, I think, spirit experiment, like yeah. how far people go yeah. with authority. Um, yes. So yeah, it just shows you how much, how much power that they have. Okay. And then there's another one. This is more of like, it's more of a fable, but it's based on okay. actual, like they teach this. Okay. But it's based on um, more of like, a derivative of the studies. Okay. So it's not an actual okay. study, but you have the five monkeys. Have you heard about the five monkeys in the ladder? You put five monkeys in a cage, you put a ladder, you put bananas on the top of the ladder. And then basically the monkeys like start running up the ladder to get the bananas. And then you, you spray them with a fire hose. It's all oh five gosh. monkeys. Okay. So then the monkeys learn, like don't go up the ladder. And if anybody else starts going up the ladder, they'll attack that monkey. So then they take one of the monkeys out and they put a new monkey and he doesn't know the rules. He starts going up the ladder and the other monkeys attack him. Even though it, it, now that monkey knows like, oh, I can't go up the ladder anymore. <clears throat> He's never experienced the fire hose. He just knows he doesn't go up the ladder anymore. They keep taking the monkeys out and eventually there's five monkeys in the cage. They've never experienced the, the, the fire hose, but they don't go up mm -hmm. the ladder. And if anybody does, they attack them, right? Like that's social oh conditioning, gosh. right? Like that's, that's the thing, okay? Yeah, so here's a, here's a wild one. So um, right, we have two dozen like adult hens and I'm raising – five i guess you'd call them teenager hens because they're not like babies but they're not full-grown hens yeah and we put them in the barn with the other ones at night but we put them in a crate because when they're younger you got to worry about the rooster with the young ones yeah so what we've done is we keep the, the i could never get them in the crate it was so hard so what i did is i put a food bowl in front of it and they all start eating they all start eating what i did is i gradually kept moving the food bowl till it was inside the crate where now they just go in the crate because they're like oh there's gonna be a food bowl in there it, yeah. it's wild man yeah it's it's wild and it, i don't think it's so bad if if you're a benevolent farmer Yes. Okay. It, it, maybe it's justifiable. Um, sure. But these aren't benevolent people. Like they're conditioning us for for their needs, right? And that's where it gets scary. And I, I wanted to read this. This is again. I wrote this book yeah. like I wrote this book like ten years ago, or twelve or something. It's been a while. And when it first came out, everybody's like, "You're crazy." And now, like people have come back and been like, "Dude, how did you know?" Because some of the stuff that's actually happening right now in the schools, and I, I hate to even say, it, but like the the push for it seems like pedophilia and stuff like that. Like I said that yeah. that was coming. People are like, you're crazy. You're fear mongering. Now they're like, dude, and, I, and it came faster than even I thought it would come. Right. But yeah, this is really important because this guy is Fitch. He, he's a, a social psychologist, a philosopher. And I, I, I just looked up the other day. Cause I wanted to know, like, when did he write this? It was in sure. the 1700s. Oh my gosh. 1700s. And he says, the social psychologist of the future will have a number of classes of school children on whom they will try different methods of producing an unshakable conviction that snow is black. When the technique has been perfected, every government that has been charged of education for more than one generation will be able to control its subjects securely without the need of armies or policemen. And this was written in the 1700s, guys. So they've been perfecting this model for a long time. I think maybe it was a social media thing you saw that I recorded a little bit ago, but uh, it was like, you guys, you, you had a you had a much different hairstyle in it, so it might have been might have been a time ago. ago. Okay, my wife's yeah, posting old videos, but I was like, you guys, we've arrived, we we've arrived. There are literally boys who think that they're girls now, and everybody went along with it. And uh, it's like they they've succeeded. There's nothing that they could they could tell you tomorrow the schools that the world is flat, mm -hmm. and then the next year they could say no, we were wrong. It's a pyramid. And everybody would believe it. I mean, it's like once this, this social conditioning is so powerful, reason doesn't thwart it. And that's why you yeah. have these men on the street. They go out there and they try to talk to these people and people get angry. They don't care. They've been socially conditioned. They don't, the, the truth is, will not penetrate them because they want to believe. It's a social thing. It's more powerful than the truth. Okay. So they got this idea that they could basically create utopia by programming children. There was one problem. You cannot program rats in the wild. You can't program pigeons in the wild. You have to have a cage. And children were out there in the wild. So how did you get them into the cage? So in the mm -hmm. 1800s, they really started to push. Same guy. That was late 1700s into the early 1800s. So this is their push for this school, this utopia, enlightened utopia. They say, we'll get everybody into schools. We'll make the parents hand their children over at a very early age. We'll put them in the schools and we'll, we'll program these kids.